The magnificent tiger is now considered one of the most endangered animals on the planet. As few as 3,000 could be left in the wild, but tens of thousands more are bred and kept captive in unsuitable conditions all over the world. But there is one place where perhaps you wouldn't expect to find 18 tigers living in a more natural environment. And that is the Isle of Wight Zoo, home to one of the largest tiger sanctuaries in Europe. Every morning, the first job for the keepers is to check on the cats and the security of their enclosures. And animal manager Charlotte has come to visit a brother and sister who live together. Aisha and Diamond, youngest tigers in the sanctuary, have been here since they were so big. In fact, when they arrived, Diamond jumped up and literally came to my knee. Um, they were three months old. As they were so young, Charlotte had to hand rear them. And years later, they still all share a close bond. You can plainly see that Aisha trusts me. You know, she's got no qualms at all about coming up and having me in her space. It's a relationship that's developed and gets, you know, deeper and deeper. But you can see, obviously, that there's uh, something between us here, which, um, means that there's protection from, you know, what basically lies beneath the skin of these animals, which is, you could say, you know, potentially a time bomb waiting to go off in the wrong situation. By just nine months, tigers are capable of killing a human. So here at the zoo, security measures are very tight. There's not a lot of room for error, and the fact of the matter is that if something goes wrong, it's probably going to go very wrong. Um, it's most likely that there will be a fatal outcome. So um, we minimise human error. So the animal carers always work in teams of two. And the golden rule is check, check, and check again, basically. So they have to check locks um, twice. They have to turn signs around, no entry signs. Um, it's a visual sort of... Um, way of communicating if animals are in their dens or not. They are not allowed to speak, have conversations, because it only takes a split second of, you know, what you watched on TV last night or something, and, and, and you can just lose that concentration. They have a set of keys on them each in case they suddenly needed to shut themselves, lock themselves into a safe area. Um, and, of course, they know the exact procedure to follow should, um, worst case scenario, an, a, a tiger escape. This 20-acre site houses 16 enclosures and sharing life with the tigers are lions and jaguars. The zoo has recreated the different habitats of big cats living in the wild. Most of the animals don't spend more than two days in the same enclosure. A sliding door mechanism means they can all swap around, keeping the animals stimulated and happy but managing their movements takes great care, and it's not like this everywhere. In America, where there are numerous and thousands of, of these high-risk animals being kept as pets, then obviously you're opening up a can of worms in regards to the likelihood of escape where they're being looked after in insecure units, often by untrained people, uh, just totally inadequate setups. Um, and, you know, people have died as a consequence, but often cats die too because they have to be destroyed if they're, you know, in a um, situation where they're going to be endangering people's lives and just acting off the back of their instincts and out of territories, they tend to feel insecure as well. They're not supposed to be in control of their instincts. They have, you know, no ability other than to basically act as a predator in those situations um, and often just through pure fear and self-defence. And, you know, 
these animals to us are are absolutely precious. They are our, you know, our best friends, and it's for us to make sure they're not put in that same position, which would be, as far as we're concerned, unacceptable. Big cat footprints are as individual as human fingerprints. And they're known as pug marks. But finding them can be difficult. The cats move at different speeds, in all kinds of weather and over various terrains. And as they walk, their back foot comes over and often covers the front pug mark. Tiger prints can vary greatly in size. Usually, the males are much larger than the females. There's also a difference in shape as well. With the male pug mark, there's a curve around. You could just draw a curved line around the end of the, the foot mark there. But with a female, her toes tend to be a little bit more pointed. And if you were to draw around the end, what you'd end up is, is something a bit like an inverted tick. Last year, Tracy and zoo manager Greg used the pug marks to track tigers in the wild. The prints helped them to identify males and females. And these are very mm. fresh, so she's it's very, very recent. You only just missed her. They're on top of the tire marks, the jeeps that have been through. Mm. Last ten minutes. Yes. Today, Tracy is taking some cast of the pug marks for educational purposes. The visually impaired will also be able to feel the cast to get a better idea of the shape of a tiger's foot. It's going to be a little while before the plaster of power sets properly. Then they'll be able to compare the male and the female pug marks. Each of the sanctuary's big cats has its own unique personality. But the keepers have noticed that Tigress Tsarina is not being her usual self. Zarina has always been a very feisty cat, you know, she has always been one of our more outspoken tigers, shall we say, and she's kind of shrunk into a bit of a wallflower over the last month, six weeks, and has caused the team real concern. It's really hard to accentuate just how much of a challenge it is when you're dealing with animals that you're not interacting with in the way that you are if you've got a house cat. You know, every day you're obviously feeling it, it's coming onto your lap and you're stroking it and um, you know, you're watching how it's reacting to your physical contact and so forth and um, it is really, really hard when you haven't got that physical contact with the animals and they are not always an open book, they're wild animals, their instincts are still very strong to try and pretend that all's A-OK -okay when maybe it isn't. Vet Ian Green has been called to investigate. I'm going to be tranquilising her so that I can get a, a very good, you know, physical hands-on examination of her. Um, so that will allow me to examine her mouth, her head, um, uh, put a stethoscope on her chest, um, get a good palpation of her abdomen, um, feel all her joints, basically give her a, a, a thorough clinical examination. Now, depending on what I find, uh, that will govern what else I may want to do. For example, if I find something within her mouth, I might need a little bit of surgery. If I can't find anything particularly, I will almost certainly want to go on and take some blood samples from her to run a few different checks on her internal organs. So it's always a little bit of an unknown when you enter this situation. What are we going to find and therefore what will that lead on to? Obviously, this is an intense time, is when we're actually doing anything intrusive to the animals. And it's never pleasant for us, it's never easy for us. These are our friends at the end of the day. But there is no other way to obviously carry out the investigations that we need to carry out today but to do this. The anaesthetic can work in as little as 10 minutes, but Zarina is not the easiest animal to sedate. She's fighting the effects of the drugs. She is now looking like she's starting to really go into the, uh, the sleep that we needed to, so we'll be just testing her out in a moment. It 
It looks like Tsarina is asleep, but Ian can't afford to take any chances. He needs to make absolutely sure before going into the enclosure. Now Tsarina is sedated, Ian can give her a full body examination. In the wild, a tiger's lifespan is around 10 to 15, so at 14, Tsarina is an old cat, and of course, this could bring health problems. Um. I can feel a lump back here. Ian has discovered what could be a serious problem. That concerns me. At the Isle of Wight Zoo, 14-year-old tigress Sarina is under anaesthetic. There is a lump there that, um, that I'm not happy with. Sarina has been feeling unwell for the past few weeks, and Vet Ian's investigation has raised a serious concern. It, it's always difficult to, to tell because you're feeling other tissue around it, but it's certainly at least, you know, tangerine size, but, you know, with other tissue around, but it, it could be bigger than that. Now, yeah, so that could be bladder tumour, but it could be something in, in something, somewhere like the cervix um, or, the, or the body of the uterus, even. Um, the only way we're going to know is with exploratory surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sarina has certainly had enough anaesthetic, but suddenly she starts to move. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Everyone, get out quick. It looks like Sarina is coming round from the anaesthetic, but actually she's having a seizure. Ian has to remove the tubes to avoid her choking. Once the seizure passes, Sarina should be OK. I mean, she wouldn't have known what she was doing you know, when she was like that, but it's, it can still be dangerous just from the, the reflex point of view. Sure. Yeah. It's unusual to get an animal fitting when they are so heavily sedated, but it does occasionally happen. And sometimes it can happen because there's something bizarre happening with liver function or kidney function. Um, sometimes it can be that there's a, a little clot affecting the brain or you know something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm even more concerned you know, than, than I was. And what's the prognosis for that? Not good. Um, bladder tumours in carnivores tend, more often than not, they tend to be malignant rather mm -hmm. than benign. Yeah. Sarina is going to need exploratory surgery in the next couple of days. The Isle of Wight Zoo is home to 23 exotic big cats. Most of them, though, are not pure species. They're hybrids, so they don't breed them. But this isn't true of the park's large collection of primates. Of the five species of lemur living within lemur land, certain individuals are part of an important European breeding programme. And there's been some good news for the mongoose lemurs. A few days ago, in the early hours of the morning, Soil gave birth. When we came in, she was going through labour, came in, moved the boys away, and about two minutes later, one last little grunt, one last little push, and we had a, uh, a little mini mongoose lemur with us. Baby and mum seem to be doing fine. We've gone through the troublesome period, which is obviously the first 24 hours to check to see the survival of the youngster, but also because Sawyer is a new mother, and quite often it's not uncommon at all for after the first 24 hours for a new mum to reject their youngster, kind of like they've forgotten, they haven't had the practice, so they kept, there is always that possibility of rejecting the youngster. If you sit up, I can see your little baby. Both the males and the females are born with a white ruff, so it's difficult at this stage to determine the sex. If it's a girl, the white ruff will stay, and if it's a boy, the colour will change. But the keepers won't know until the baby's about six weeks old. 
But he, or she, has been given a temporary name. The unofficial name at the moment is Bean, simply because she looks like, or he looks like, a giant baked bean at the moment. But when uh, he or she develops a personality, we'll then think of a much more suitable Madagascan name. The keepers will need to regularly check on the little one to ensure that it continues feeding and to make certain that the male lemurs don't become too rough. Little does Baby Bean know just how important he or she is. We're really pleased that this has happened. She's now, um, or he, is now a number 113 in captivity worldwide. Um, so that's still very low numbers in captivity. In the wild, their numbers um, were, when last looked at in 2006, were just over 1,000. But the trend for mongoose uh, population numbers in the wild is decreasing. So it'd be the next, uh, next count to see how low their numbers have got now. So it is very important that th there is a successful breeding programme for, for these. Hopefully, this little one now can play a part in, in the breeding programme a few years down the line when he or she's mature. Back with Education Officer Tracy, and the pug mark impressions from male tiger Sultan are now set. But it's dried out, we've managed to wash it off, and now we can see it's a really, really quite a nice pug mark, quite a good print. And then we also, for contrast, decided we would take one from one of our female tigers as well. So this is from Asia. Um, Asia, her enclosure is a different substrate, so it's on a sandy surface, so we've got a different texture to it, but you can still see the difference in size really well. She's got quite dainty feet in comparison with Sultan's great big clodhoppers. Aisha's pug marks are 11 centimetres wide and long, but Sultan's span 14 centimetres both ways. These are both front feet pug marks, so the footprints from the front feet, and the front pug marks are much bigger than those from the back feet. The front paws are much larger. The animals use those when they're hunting to grab hold of their prey. And the back feet are much more for sort of propulsion. The cats at the sanctuary come from a variety of backgrounds, including circus animals, pets and unwanted breeding stock. But some were brought here because of the zoo's expertise in hand-rearing and fostering tiger cubs. One of these was Tigress Xena. She's the zoo's only white tiger and, unfortunately, she now only has one eye. Eight months ago, Xena suffered from glaucoma. This is a disease of the eye where pressure in the eyeball damages the optic disc, affecting the vision. The pressure became so high, it led to blindness, and Xena was in a lot of pain. The zoo's main priority is the animal's welfare, and an examination confirmed that removing Xena's eye was the best thing for her. 86. Wow. Oh, mm. That's just over so four times normal. Although it sounds like a pretty horrific you know, thing to do to an animal, if you had a pet at home and it was in the situation that Xena was in, from a welfare point of view, this is the only thing that you can really do. And now we're left with purely a cosmetic situation, which is, you know, as far as we're concerned, Zena's still Zena. She's still beautiful. Today, Zena is fully recovered. Well, it's it's quite amazing to see just the changes. In her. She's back to normal, probably probably better than she she used to be. Uh, she's she's a real nutcase in the enclosure. She she runs around there. You wouldn't believe it. A cat with one eye, uh, the way she moves around. She's uh, she's. Fantastic, actually, and it just shows you just how adaptive these guys are. Uh, with uh, a human, I think we'd be uh, lying in bed whining about it. They just get on and do it. Like all tigers, Xena can rest for up to 20 hours a day. But when she's active, 11-year-old Xena loves swimming, and one of her favourite games also makes sure she exercises her good eye. We've got a boomer ball for her, which we're going to just drop in the water, and the idea is that she goes in for a quick dip and plays with the boom wall, pulls it out and interacts well with it because she really likes having the boom wall. So a major part of her day, we try and do is hide it every now and then again so she forgets about it and then we put it back in and, and all of a sudden she's really keen. 
Zena hasn't seen the boomer ball for a few days, so she's really keen to make her claim. And in true territorial fashion, she drags it off into her domain. But Zena wants to make just one last lap of her pond, just in case there's something that she might have missed. A rock concealing a camera has been spotted. And it looks like Xena has found another toy to go with her boomer ball. Oh, brilliant. It's your, your equipment that got wet, not mine. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, just shows you. That's a good demonstration of someone who has, who's, who's far better than before. She can still work, work wonders. How much is it going to cost us, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my